Medical marijuana users are now lobbying for the right to carry firearms. <laughs> yeah, think about it. This is perfect because no one's a better shot than a stoned old man with glaucoma. <laughs> Well, entrepreneurs competing for licenses to sell medical marijuana may ask to carry firearms as well. There is a green rush in states where medical marijuana is allowed, and why not? It's potentially a multi-billion dollar business, but states are handing out only a limited number of licenses, and that makes the competition for those licenses cutthroat. So does that lead to corruption? And why are only a select few able to corner the market? Here to score it for us are Jim Pakulis. He is CEO of General Cannabis and Toby Smith of NBT Equities Research. He owns and recommends the General Cannabis stock and is a consultant to them as well. Well, who knew, Toby? Who did? I thought I knew you. I didn't know you were involved in all this. Now, is this just, Toby, about medical marijuana or is there something more going? Are you trying to set yourself up for the day when, med when marijuana is legal? Well, I, I think, David, two things. One is, I, I think medical marijuana will be legal throughout the United States. It's, it's a state decision, not a federal decision. But the bigger issue is that uh, medicinal cannabis, medical marijuana, whatever you want to call it, it works. It works for a tremendous amount of chronic disease. And the idea that maybe eight to ten billion dollars a year is being purchased essentially on the black market because the states and other uh, agencies haven't come to grips with this but is wait, insane. But wait, 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 wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute. That's that's a pretty fast and loose figure you're throwing out. Eight to ten billion. You really think that all of that eight to ten billion is, is medical marijuana? You don't think a lot of it is just people using this stuff? Well, there's been a lot of research done, David, and, and the entire marijuana business, you know, licit, illicit is certainly in the 40, maybe 50 billion, could be yeah. as much as 100 billion dollars. I'm talking about medicinal, man. I'm talking about no, the I understand, people like but my Jim, uncle Stan. You know, there is a lot of controversy, Jim, about whether or not there aren't alternatives to medicinal marijuana. Uh, there's this drug called Marinol, which is apparently pretty effective uh, for those people who are doing chemotherapy and other things where they get nauseous. Yeah, but I, I, I still think the actual product itself, the natural product, is by far significantly better than any synthetic that can be derived from a pharmaceutical company. It's like getting a, a, a synthetic wine. You, you just can't, you, it is not as effective as the actual product itself. Well, the not, natural not product everybody is agrees, far Jim. Let me just, I mean, I could quote a number. I'm sure you've got quotes on the other side, but there is no evidence that smoke marijuana is better than Marinol. That comes from one doctor. The, the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation says the harm, harmful side effects of marijuana far outweigh its potential benefit so there's there's controversy on this there's controversy on it but we have st we have a tremendous amount of data we are data centric we are probably the most amount of data in, of any entity including municipalities in the United States and by far I can I can provide evidence that medicinal cannabis natural medicinal cannabis is significantly better than a synthetic cannabis. all right now the thing that I mentioned at the, in the introduction which is that some people look at what you guys are doing and saying you're trying to corner the market I mean if this is if it's gonna be open or at least more open than it has been in the past you shouldn't have special licenses just to the people who are good deal makers like Toby Smith. What do you say to that, Jim? It, it's a state-by-state state regulation. I agree. First of all, it's a fragmented, disjoint industry. There's no question about it. You have the bipolar opposites between the federal government and the various states. Fifteen states right now permit medicinal cannabis. We have another ten states that are looking to legislate it in their system. Uh, so you have over four-fifths of the population, of the adult population, and this is an ABC report, 81 percent of the population in the United States would like to have medicinal cannabis as another arrow in their quiver. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be mandatory, but at least give the individuals, give the adults, give the patients, the end user, the ability to utilize medicinal cannabis. By the way, Toby, do you think there will be an end to prohibition? And if there is, aren't you setting yourself up pretty, pretty well here? Well, in my personal opinion, yes, I think there will be, because I think the evidence completely overwhelms whatever, uh, you know, crazy idea the federal okay, government has about what medical... but did that weigh into your decision to actually own and recommend and consult with these guys? A a absolutely, David. I mean, okay. we look for the next big thing, and if you look at, at for chronic care, this is a, 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 a uh, you know, a treatment that is going to grow into the, the tens of billions of dollars. All right, guys, we got to leave it at that. Jim Pakulis and Toby Smith, best of luck to you guys. Thank you very much for coming. Coming up on deck, Real Solutions.